Hey everybody, hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. Today's video is going to be about cutting all of the applique pieces for Kimberbell's Red, White, and Bloom using the Brother Scan and Cut. I brought my machine over here so you guys can see it. It has a little screen on here and it has wireless capability and it has the ability to scan in the mat and take a picture of the fabric and that makes it so easy to rearrange your pieces in order to get them onto the fabric and make sure that they cut properly. So that's one of the reasons I chose the scan and cut. This is the SDX225. A lot of you asked me what model I have. My previous model is the CM650. I get asked a lot of questions about the differences in the models of the scan and cut machines. I will put a link below to a website called Alanda Craft and they have a wonderful side-by-side -side comparison of the machines and will let you know what each one does when compared to the others. So the difference between the models that are 225 and above, we'll say numbers higher than 225, and then there is an SDX 125 and I believe there's an 85. The 85 and the 125 can be purchased like on Amazon and I'll put links to those below. And those machines cut identical to the 225 and above, but they have fewer internal designs, which matters to people who, who play with a lot of vinyl or paper and whatnot. They also cannot scan a 24 inch mat. I know the 125 can cut a 24 inch mat, I, but it can't scan in a 24 inch mat. And if you do a lot of applique and you want to put a whole bunch of pieces down at one time on that 24 inch mat, then you wouldn't be able to scan it in and make sure everything fit on either the 125 or the 85. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. The ones that you get at a dealer, obviously you will get dealer support for those. And I have purchased all of mine at allbrands.com. They're a wonderful dealership for the Brother Scan and Cut and all things Scan and Cut that you might need. The mat that I'm using is the gold fabric mat. You don't have to have one of those. Brother just recently came out with the gold fabric mat. It's very, very sticky to hold on to your fabric. And I do it unconventionally. I put heat and bond on the back of my fabric and I put my fabric on face down, pretty side down. So I have to mirror my pieces and flip them horizontally so that they all will cut out properly according to the embroidery file. I know that's not required. You guys, I'm too old to change, okay? <laughs> it works great for me. If you do not have a gold fabric mat, you can use the purple standard tech mat, but you would need a fabric support sheet on that in order to hold the fabric on sticky enough in order to have the blade go over it so it doesn't drag on the fabric. The fabric support sheet is, it looks like clear contact paper. It's a 12 by 12 square and it's super, super sticky. It works really good and I use that all the time before I got the gold fabric mat. On all of the pieces, I'm backing them with heat and bond light. You don't want to use anything heavier than heat and bond light. It probably may make your quilt too stiff. The pattern does not provide SVG cutting files for the glitter vinyl or the leather. Those are going to be what's called raw edge applique. The raw edge applique does a single stitch all the way around and that's it. It doesn't come up and enclose the edge of the vinyl or the leather in any way. It just runs a straight stitch all the way around. So we're only going to use the SVG files that are part of the fabric applique pieces. I'm not doing the lemonade pitcher because that was part of the Life is Sweet block that we did earlier. There is also one of the SVG files is for another project that's in the back of the pattern book. So other than that, I think that's all I really need to tell you about this. I've got all of my baggies here and it's just so handy. I cut these already. I've already shot this video 
and this is kind of just an intro that I'm doing for you guys but all the baggies now have all my pieces and my pieces are all backed with heat and bond and they're ready to go on the squares so I think that's all I needed to tell you guys up front if you've got any other questions please feel free to leave a comment below I hope you give this video a thumbs up this is for beginner scan and cut users you guys so if I go kind of slow I'm sorry hey there's a boo-boo in here you'll figure it out <laughs> Oops. What I want to do today is to cut out all of the applique pieces in my scan and cut. I've taken alpha bitties and just kind of, it, no particular order, rhyme or reason, anything like that. And I have identified these pieces with the piece of fabric that it goes with in the book. So on this one, this is, I put Scan and Cut D. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get it up close. It says Scan and Cut D. This particular piece right here, I'm only making two of the watermelon pieces with the Scan and Cut, and the other one I'm going to do the old-fashioned way where you trim it around so I can show people how to do that that do not have a cutting machine. This is Heat and Bond Light. You can see this right here. Heat and Bond Light. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my material and I'm going to put it just barely over the edge of the heat and bond. This is the sticky side of the heat and bond right here. And I'm just going to overlap the edges just a tiny bit so that you cannot see the heat and bond through them. I'm telling you guys, it's very unconventional, but it's very efficient. It's a very efficient way to do this. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just gonna overlap them like a 16th of an inch type. Now I cut my pieces anywhere from one half to three quarters of an inch larger all the way around when I'm gonna be doing heat and bond on my pieces. But what I'm trying to do is have as little heat and bond showing as possible on my pieces here. So I'm going to be able to put heat and bond on all of these pretty much in one go. And then I will take the page to the uh, cutting table and I will cut all of these apart. This one already has heat and bond on the back, so this is W. Okay, now I have a piece of parchment paper. And I'm just going to lay the parchment paper on top. I'm going to go ahead and iron these on. When I do this, I give them a light pressing kind of just like this. And then I cut them apart and then I bring them back over to the ironing board and press them on the back side just to make sure it's on there real good. If you are going to be using a cutting machine, you want to make sure that your adhesive is on very well. Otherwise, it won't cut right. This is so much faster than cutting out heat and bond. And see, this is the sticky part on here. Cutting out the heat and bond for each individual piece. And, and it's just, to me, that just is so painfully slow and inefficient and you know me I'm all about efficiency okay this looks good so now I'm going to take this over to the cutting table and I'm going to cut all of the pieces out of the heat and bond and you can see this isn't this isn't on right here that's okay I'm going to trim just barely on the inside of this fabric to cut off the heat and bond that you can see so I'll be right back
Okay, so now all of the pieces have heat and bond on the back and I'm gonna go give them one final quick press from the back side. And now, because of the way I cut them, I know that there's not gonna be any heat and bond at all that's gonna to stick to my ironing table. And if there was any little bit, I could certainly put parchment paper underneath this. So see, in just a matter of a couple of minutes, I was able to put heat and bond on the back of all of the pieces that are gonna be cut on the scan and cut with applique. And here's why I love that hole in my cutting table. <laughs> this is fabulous. Such a great design. So before I go to the computer, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the fabric on my cutting mat. This is the gold fabric mat for the Brother Scan and Cut. If you do not have a gold fabric mat, you can use a standard tack mat, which is the dark purple one, and you can put a fabric support sheet on it. It's very sticky, and it'll work about the same. So I am gonna go ahead and take my watermelon fabric, and I'm gonna put it right here. This is to cut two of the three watermelons, and it's oversized on purpose, and I'm just gonna put watermelon because I want to remember what this piece is for when I go to the computer. And believe me, there's a method to my madness here. So this particular green piece right here is cherries leaves. So now I'm going to take my scraper and I'm going to adhere all of these pieces down pretty tightly to the mat. Again, it is fabric side down, paper side up. Do not put your paper side down on this mat. You'll be sorry. You're, you'll ruin the mat. This works so well. And the more adhered your fabric is to your mat, the cleaner the cut you're going to get. Okay, so this is all ready. Now let's go to the computer and set up all of our parts and pieces on the screen in the Brother Canvas the way we have the fabric set out on the mat. I'm going to be using the Brother's Canvas Workspace, which is the online version. I find that easier to use than the version that you download. So if my screen looks a little bit different than yours, that may be why if you are using the version that uh, you may have downloaded to your laptop. So you go to canvasworkspace.brother.com. I'm going to click login and it remembers me. So I'll just log in at the first screen, it's got some free projects that you can do. All of this is free and it's, it's free to join the Brother Canvas Workplace. I'm gonna click new because I want to create a new mat. And the first thing I need to do is to import my SVG files from the CD. And across the top, you have three tabs. You have project, edit, and view. And then you've got some icons which is new and you can overwrite and whatnot. There's where you import SVGs. There's a little tool tip that will pop up and tell you what that particular button is for. See, it says select on that one. So I'm gonna click on SVG and it wants you to choose a file. It says no file is selected. So we're gonna click on the choose file button and I'm gonna to navigate to where I have my Kimberbell SVG files. In my documents folder, I have another folder called embroidery, double click it. I have another folder in here called Kimberbell, navigate to that, double click. And inside of Kimberbell, there is red, white, and blue. 
and here are the SVG files for electronic cutting. I copied everything from the CD onto my laptop. It just makes it a lot easier. So you can only do these one at a time. You can't import a whole bunch at once. And so I'm going to click the watermelon and highlight it. You just click it one time and then click open. Now you can see the watermelon is selected and I'm going to click OK. And it has imported it. I'm going to move it to right about here. I can tell by looking at my mat that my fabric comes out to about the four and a half inch mark. So that's perfect. I'm going to put my cursor over it. I'm going to come up to edit and click on edit. And I'm going to right here in the flip section, I'm going to flip horizontally because I need to mirror image that since the fabric is face down. Now I'm going to put my crosshair over it again. I'm going to right click, come up to copy, and then right click and paste. And I'm only making two of them. If you are making all of your watermelons on your scan and cut, you will right click again and hit paste again, and that will give you three. But I don't need three, so I'm going to hit the delete key. And now I need to bring in my next one. SVG, choose the file. Let's get, it says cherries. Those are the leaves for the cherries. And you can see there it is. I'm going to click OK. And it actually brings in two, they are two separate files. So I'm just going to grab them and move them down here where I've got my green fabric on my mat already. And I'm going to take my cursor and drag it until they're both highlighted. And then I'm going to go edit and see now you cannot flip horizontally. That's because you cannot horizontally flip multiple objects. So come up here to group. That's the other way to do that. You can right click and group or you can click this group button. Now it is one object and then I'll hit edit again and there is my flip button. Now, in a perfect world, these are identical and you may or may not have to mirror them if you have your fabric face down. I know some of you are not and that's okay. You don't have to make, uh, you don't have to do that step. But I'm going to invert everything just to be sure because you never know. I'm going to SVG again and choose my file, fire up the grill. Open, OK, and my grill fabric is about right here, OK. Again, I will highlight them both, right click, group, come up to edit, and flip. And I'm going to go to SVG again, choose my file. These are the wheels for the truck. Click open, click OK. And I have them right about here. Ideally, these should be perfect circles. I don't know that. I mean, they should be, but we don't know. So I'm going to group and I'm going to edit and flip. I just I just don't like taking chances like that. That's another project right there that we are not doing. There's your flower pot for red, white, and bloom. And okay. Yeah, that fabric is right here. Move it down right about there. And it's a single object, so I'm just going to go edit and flip. SVG. Choose file. Now relish today, you need to make three of these. Click open, click OK. Oh, it comes up as three, good. I think I can just drag and highlight these. I'm going to bring them down here. I'm going to turn them into, I'm going to go right click, group, edit, flip, and now I'm going to go right click ungroup because this one 
I've got a piece of fabric up here on my mat and I need to turn it horizontally so that it fits on my fabric. I'm just going to put them approximately where they are on the mat. And that's it. I don't have any more space on my mat. Uh, everything is covered up with fabric right now. We are good to go. Now what you'll do is you'll go download and it'll want to know how do you want to do this? Do you want to download to your PC? This makes an FCM file. We're not doing that. You want to hit scan and cut transfer. So I'm going to click scan and cut transfer and it will go down to the machine. There we go. Scan and cut transfer is ready. It's all ready to cut out. Now, if you want to save this for another time, maybe you want to come back to it. If you, what you can do right here is in project title, I'm going to title it Red, White, Bloom, SVGs, like that. And then over here in Project, there is an inbox with an arrow and a plus sign, and you can just click that. And it'll say Saving This Project is Completed, and click OK. And you're all done. Now when you go to My Projects, there it is right there, and you can play with it as much as you like. So here we are at the scan and cut, and I am just going to load my mat. It helps to make sure that this corner of the mat especially is butted up against that edge. For some reason, there's some kind of sensor in here that it matters more than if this edge is actually put over here. So I'm going to hit the this middle button right here. Is It looks like your mat, and it's the load. We're going to get that loaded in. Now we need to get the design that we sent from the cloud to the machine. And on your screen, in here, these are patterns that are internal to the machine already. And then here is where you do your scanning. So to get the design that we just sent down from the cloud, we're going to click this button right here that says Retrieve Data. And it wants to know, well, where do you want to get it from? Do you want to get data from inside the machine? Here's the little cloud marks, those little radar waves. That's the cloud. Maybe you have them on a USB or you might have it cabled to your computer. So it's from the cloud. And it says retrieving. And there it is. There is all of our pieces. This is just me. You don't have to do this and I highly recommend that you test. I have just found, in, it's just with Kimberbell Designs, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enlarge each one of these one click on the machine. I find it more precise to do it in the machine than in the cloud. The cloud, there's so many variables, it's just more difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch each one of these. I'm going to click Edit and object edit and right here there is a box this very first button with a stretchy arrow that means to enlarge the one with a plus sign means to make multiples we don't want that we're just going to enlarge and by default this button right here is on this is the up and down button and the side to side button if the button is off you can independently change the height or change the width. You want to make sure that button is on so that locks the dimensions. I'm just going to hit the plus sign on the height. It doesn't really matter which one. One click. That's it. That will do it. Two clicks will work too. It's completely up to you. Again, I recommend that you test. When I did it straight off the SVG file, the the stitching caught it just fine. This just makes me feel better. And so I'm going to continue to go through all of these. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to touch each one. I'm going to press the stretch button and hit the plus sign and tell it OK. Each one. Stretch plus OK. Stretch plus OK. Stretch plus OK, stretch, plus OK, stretch, plus OK, plus OK. 
All right, that's good. I'm going to click OK. I'm done with that menu. I need to scan in the mat. So I'm all finished with any kind of editing that I would do. I'm going to tell it OK. Now this center button right here that it looks like a blue square with a bar that's to scan your fabric so let's go ahead and press that and I'm gonna hit start so now it's taking a picture of all of the fabric that's on the mat aha perfect there we go Okay, I just kind of move things around a little bit, but you can see how everything's going to fit. So if you group in the cloud, you're kind of committed. If you don't want them together, you can ungroup in the cloud before you send it down. That's kind of how this machine thinks. So in this case, if I move a wheel, because it was kind of up off, it's going to move them together because I left them group when I sent them down. That's okay. Everything works out fine here. I'm going to tell it okay. And it says, please select, hit select. I'm gonna hit cut and start and we're ready. finished. I'm going to tell it OK and eject. Let's see how we did. Oh, you know what? I bet you I had half cut on. OK, you know what I did? I messed up. I have half cut on from some vinyl I was cutting before. That's okay. If you do that, don't worry about it. Take it and put it back in your machine. <laughs> I know y'all have done this or you're going to do it if you have a scan and cut. Let me show you how to fix that. My bad. I forgot and even thought about it and I said, nah, no big deal. No big deal. Let me show you. So don't take anything off your mat. Let me move this up here. I'm going to go to, it's still in the cut uh, menu, I'm going to hit please select, I'm going to hit cut, and I'm going to go to my little wrench right here, and I'm going to hit the down arrow, and half cut on, I'm going to turn that off. I knew it, and just go ahead and hit start and let it cut again. Hey, it happens, it ain't pretty. It's cutting exactly on the same lines as before. It's perfectly fine. Now let's see how we did. Tell it OK and eject. <laughs> Not the first time I've done that. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got now. There we go. There's all my pieces. <laughs> Too funny. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm going to put these three together so they go in the same bag for that block. As you can tell, you can get away with smaller pieces of fabric doing this, but I just kept them not only the same size that they wanted from the uh, manufacturer, but also just so I went a little bit bigger. It just makes everything come out very clean. Look at this. This is awesome. This is so much better than removing the hoop and cutting all of the pieces after the tack down stitch. All right. We are ready. Good to go. That was easy. Now I'm going to take all of my pieces and put them in the baggie where they go. We still got to do the stars. White and bloom. Here's my little flower pot. Oh, that is so cute. Oh my goodness, that's cute. Parade truck. I need my wheels. All right. This is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and cut the star blocks. Okay, so I'm all finished. I got all my little points cut out for the star blocks. All right, you guys, this has been a lot of fun, and I hope you had a good time with it. We're almost ready to start on Monday the 26th. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.